Hey, welcome in. This is the week 10 edition of the Philadelphia Eagles Blitz. Eagles coming off their bye week now, looking to stir up a little bit of momentum now with the NFC East race starting to take shape, and I believe it's right for the taking. And we're going to start right there with looking at the NFC East. The Washington Redskins still sit atop this division at 5-3, and three, but such a lengthy list of injuries that are happening to them now, that 5-3, and three, not an optimistic 5-3. and three. Eagles sitting there right a game back, 4-4. Four and four. They're rested, coming off their bye week, looking to surge into the second half of the season. We'll talk about, about that a little bit more coming up. Cowboys three and five, they've lost three straight. 28-14, they lost on Monday Night Football. I think it's safe to call that a debacle against the Tennessee Titans. So a, a real different feel for this Cowboys team going forward. Giants at one and seven, free falling a little bit, already starting to look ahead to 2019. So the Eagles in good shape. They get all three of their division opponents over the course of the next four weeks. So if you check back in at the start of December, this race could feel a lot different than it does right now. Eagles, of course, they, they go into their bye week. They trade for Golden Tate, send a third-round pick to the Detroit Lions to get a slot receiver who's very, very productive, fits into this offense well, kind of shapes the offense a little differently. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, another slot wide receiver. Alshon Jeffrey, a really good perimeter threat. So you have a very viable group of wide receivers. Now the question going into Week 10 and beyond is how does the addition of Golden Tate change the way this Eagles offense functions. I think it will be for the better. He's a guy who can make a lot of yards after the catch. I think Carson Wentz is going to love him. Maybe a good explosive second half coming up for Carson Wentz as he's healthy and playing at his best right now. A couple injury updates going into Week 10. Timmy Jernigan, the defensive tackle, back at practice. I don't think you'll see him for the next week, maybe two weeks, but you'll start to see him getting into the fold in time for that playoff push late. There are signs right now that Darren Sproles, the running back, could return this week. He hasn't played since week one with an injury. So I, th I think he can bring something new and different to a, a running back situation that they're looking for some answers. They're looking for, for some explosiveness. Uh, Lane Johnson, uh, the right tackle who suffered a knee injury against Jacksonville a couple weeks ago, they haven't ruled him out for week 10 either. That would be a huge boost to this team's chances coming up. Key NFC East game coming against the Dallas Cowboys. So as the Eagles are resting, the Cowboys are reeling just a little bit. Three and five right now. Three straight losses. A, a bad one, an ugly one to the Tennessee Titans this past week. Jerry Jones, the team owner, said no midseason coaching changes are anticipated. But you get the sense right now that Jason Garrett, their head coach, is coaching for his job. I don't think it would be a bad idea to tear this organization down and start from the ground floor. That's what Troy Aiken, and a Hall of Fame quarterback from the Dallas Cowboys, said earlier this week, and I think he's probably right about that. The Eagles have a chance to further that a little bit. You send the Cowboys to 3-6, and six, suddenly you're looking at making some changes a little bit more urgently for them. Uh, so you look at the offense, Dak Prescott, an 88.9 quarterback rating. That's number 24 in the NFL. The offensive line that was once a dominator, not that same dominant force it used to be. It's regressed back to maybe the middle of the pack in the NFL. Not quite good enough to make up for some of the weaknesses around it. Amari Cooper, they traded a first-round pick to Oakland to get a wide receiver to hopefully help that wide receiver core. Not a lot of playmakers. I'm not sure if Amari Cooper is enough to get this team over the top. Uh, rough combination all around. Struggles for Dak Prescott. There are questions about him being the long-term answer there. The only real bright spot is Ezekiel Elliott, the running back. 680 rushing yards, averaging 4.6 yards per carry. He's the one factor that the Eagles have to game plan around. It's a number 27 total offense in the NFL. Number 29 passing offense. So there are some limitations here. It fits well with the, what the Eagles already do. Defensively, Sean Lee, their leader on the inside, their linebacker, Suffered a hamstring injury. It's a guy who's had a hard time staying healthy throughout his career. Not likely to play, play this week. Could miss a significant amount of time. The, the Cowboys have built up their linebacker depth. Jalen Smith, Leighton Vander Esch, some good linebackers in Sean Lee's place. They also have some athletes on the back end of their defense. They rank number five against the pass, number 10 against the run. Get a good pass rush going with Demarcus Lawrence. So with the, even without Sean Lee, this is an impact group. The Eagles will, ha will have to work to score points against this Cowboys defense. All right, some matchups to watch, storylines to watch for Eagles-Cowboys. Number one, the Eagles run defense against Ezekiel Elliott. Eagles are allowing the second fewest rushing yards per game. Zeke Elliott, really the only real bona fide weapon for this Cowboys offense. 
If you can stop Zeke Elliott, there's a good chance you slow this Cowboys offense down, and I think the Eagles have a really good shot to do that. How about third downs? Uh, the Cowboys rank 29th, giving up 44% conversions. And this is an area where Carson Wentz, the Eagles quarterback, really thrives. He's a magician on third down. There's a good chance that the Eagles are able to string together some drives just because of the way that they're able to convert these third downs. The struggles the Cowboys have had slowing down offenses on third down. And then the addition of Golden Tate, what does this look like? What does the passing game look like? How does it shape the flow of this Eagles offense? Is it, is it enough to get them to the next level, get them playing like a Super Bowl team again? There's a decent chance of that. We'll start to get some clues of what Golden Tate's arrival means to this Eagles team moving forward. All right, the line on this game started at four and a half points in the Eagles' favor. It ballooned midweek to seven points. I think a lot of gamblers out there are expecting the Eagles to steamroll the Cowboys, given how the Cowboys are going right now. I don't think it's a bad thought. Penn Live reporter Daniel Gallen joins us now to give his thoughts on the matchup and his prediction for the game. Eagles are coming off the bye week. They're 4-4, four and four, second place in the NFC East, and there's a lot of football ahead. Big thing to watch for the Eagles in the second half is their tough schedule. They have five divisional games left on the schedule, including two games against the first place Redskins in the final month of the season. And they also have to play the New Orleans Saints and the Los Angeles Rams, the top two teams in the NFC who played a classic on Sunday afternoon uh, twice on the road. Uh, there's some big games. It's going to determine uh, how the Eagles make the playoffs. Will they be a divisional team? Can they sneak into the wild card? Could they even sneak into a number one or two spot? Oh, which doesn't seem that likely. Uh, the tone start, they can set the tone uh, on Sunday night against the Cowboys in prime time at the link in a big rivalry game. Uh, I think they'll rise to the occasion in this one. Uh, they had a week off. They added Golden Tate. They looked pretty good against the Jaguars. Uh, and the Cowboys are coming off a short week uh, after losing on Monday night to the Titans. Uh, the offense added Amari Cooper, but looked a little listless. Uh, so I think the Eagles will be up to the challenge. Uh, and I have this one, Philadelphia 28 Dallas 17. All right, thank you, Daniel. I do expect the Eagles to roll in this one. It has a chance to be an ugly matchup, I believe. I've got an Eagles 30, Cowboys 17, and I think that might be a little generous to the Cowboys. There's, a, there's some blowout appeal here if all things go right for the Eagles. We'll see what happens on Sunday. This has been the Philadelphia Eagles Blitz. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to comment in the, in the comment section below with your thoughts on the game, your predictions as well. Follow us along on PennLive.com all season long.